Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to look at topic 1.6, marginal analysis and consumer choice. This would be uh, pages 3, 488 to 490, and then 492 through 497 in your textbook. And as you can see, both by the textbook pages and then also the goals here, there's a lot to cover um, in this topic. This is by far, I think, the longest topic um, with the most in it. And so we need to really take our time and do a good job with it. But basically what we're looking at here is what I would argue the most important concept in all of microeconomics, which is this idea of marginal and marginal analysis. You're going to see that word uh, marginal again and again and again throughout the course. And it's really important you understand what it means every time it shows up. And so I really want you to do a good job as you're watching this video. So here we go. Let's just start with that word marginal. So marginal means additional or one more. Economists often encourage people to think at the margin, which means considering the benefits and costs of doing something one more time. Oftentimes in life, decisions aren't either or, right? It's like, do I eat the do I eat pizza or do I not eat pizza? Sometimes it's a, it's a question of how much. Do I eat that next slice of pizza, right? I've had five slices of pizza. Do I eat the sixth one? Not do I eat pizza at all? It's just a question of how much, right? And that's what Marginal is getting at, is that economists want people to really think about that razor's edge of their decision making, where should I do something one more time? And what are the costs and benefits of doing so? Marginal benefit is the additional benefit of doing something one more time, right? So if I eat that next slice of pizza, what is the value I'm going to gain from that? And if you recall in the last video in 1.5, we talked about total benefit basically being the total value you get out of doing something. And so marginal benefit here is the change in total benefit. And that's really what I want you to keep in mind, this idea that marginal is always the change in the total. Right? You're going to see different words after the word marginal and different words after the word total, but marginal is always the change in the total. So in this case, marginal benefit is the change in total benefit. And total benefit can be calculated by adding up uh, the marginal benefits together up into that quantity. And you'll see that in a little bit. And so in this example here, what you can see is we have quantity of movies from zero to three. We have the total benefit uh, from zero dollars, because if you don't do something at all, you don't get any benefit. And then uh, the total benefits of doing something each time. The marginal benefit is calculated as the change in the total, right? So if I consume one more movie, I gain $30, right? So it's like, what do I gain by doing it one more time? If I go from one to two, I go from 30 to 50, so I gain 20, and then from 50 to 60, I gain 10. Now, what I was mentioning before with this idea of the total benefit being calculated by adding marginal benefit is this idea that let's say I didn't give you this column and I only gave you marginal benefit. You could go backwards and find total benefit, right? So for one quantity of movie, you would add up the marginal benefits up to that quantity you're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for a quantity of one, the only marginal benefit is 30, so the total benefit's 30. If I wanted it for two movies, I add up all the marginal benefits up to two movies. So it's 30 plus 20, which is 50. So you need to be able to work both ways, given total benefit and finding marginal benefit, and then being given marginal benefit and finding total benefit. Now for marginal cost, this is the additional cost of doing something one more time. So marginal cost, therefore, is the change in total cost, right? So economists say, don't just think about what do you gain when you do something one more time, but also think about what do you lose. And this idea of marginal cost is going to be so important later on in the course when we get to the idea of firm theory and how much of a uh, output a firm should produce. And just like with total benefit, total cost can be calculated by add, adding marginal cost just like total benefit can be calculated by adding marginal benefit. So once again, with an example, so this time we have the quantity of movies and this time, how much does it cost to go? And so basically we're saying a movie ticket is $10 
And so you're going to notice here the marginal costs are all the same. However, it still works the way it did before with marginal benefit, where the change in the total is your marginal. So every time I'm adding 10, and then I can add up my marginal costs to get my total cost. So if I wanted the total cost of three movies and I was given the marginal cost, I would add them up. 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. So with that in mind, what is marginal analysis? Well, marginal analysis is equating marginal benefit and marginal cost to determine the optimal outcome, right? So we're gonna figure out, okay, where does the marginal benefit equal the marginal cost? Because that's going to determine, you know, how much of something I should do. Because think about it. If the marginal benefit's greater than the marginal cost, you should keep going because you're gaining more out of it than it is costing you. But if the marginal cost is greater than the marginal benefit, you shouldn't do it, right? If building one more highway costs the government $500 million, but they only get $10 million of additional benefit, then they shouldn't build the highway, right? So putting that into practice, uh, what is the optimal amount of movies this person should watch? So kind of look at the table here and see if you can figure out, pause the video, how many movies this person should watch. All right, the answer here is going to be three movies. Now, how do we know this? Well, we look at our marginal benefits and our marginal costs, right? So where are they equal? Well, here it is at three, right? At three movies, the marginal benefit of 10 is the same as the marginal cost. All right, now let's do it again. What is the optimal amount of movies this person should watch? So once again, pause the video and see if you can figure it out. All right, the correct answer here is gonna be two. And this one's a little trickier because at no point in the table that I gave you did marginal benefit equal marginal cost. And sometimes that will happen with uh, AP questions and, and other questions you'll see in the course. And so in those instances, what you wanna do is look for the greatest quantity where the marginal benefit is still greater than the marginal cost. In this case, that's at two. At two movies, 15 is bigger than 10. However, if you go to that third movie, 10 is bigger than five. So two would be the correct answer. All right, now let's turn our attention to utility, which is a very weird word. Um, and it, it may seem a little vague to you, but uh, I promise it'll make sense. So utility, the word means satisfaction. When you get utility out of something, you get satisfaction or usefulness out of it. Economists measure utility in two different ways, with something called utils and then dollars. Utils is simply kind of a made up measurement that just measures utility. That's all it does. Um, if you want to take advanced courses, you could look more into that and how that's calculated, but that's far beyond what we want to do here. And then oftentimes it'll be measured in dollars, just like total benefit. And there's a reason for that because total utility actually is another term for total benefit. So you'll see them being used interchangeably, just like marginal utility is another term for marginal benefit. So again, another example of, you know, different terms meaning the exact same thing. We've encountered that multiple times throughout the course, all the way back to uh, what a resource is in 1.1. So with that in mind, let's look at this table here. And the question is, what happens to marginal benefit or utility as more movies are watched? So I want you to uh, go ahead and, and pause the video and then uh, let's uh, talk about it. All right, so the correct answer here is the marginal benefit or utility is decreasing. So this is simply reading the table. As more movies are watched, we notice the marginal benefit or margin utility falls. And there's actually a really um, important law or rule around this. And this is called the law of diminishing marginal benefit or the law of diminishing margin utility. It's the idea that the marginal utility will eventually decrease as more units of a good or service are consumed. So the way to think about this, or a way to think about this, 
is think about pizza, okay? You eat that first slice of pizza, mm, it's really good, right? You eat the next slice, maybe it's even better than the one before, and so your utility actually goes up. But as you start eating more and more slices, you start getting tired of that pizza, right? Suddenly the cheese doesn't taste as good, the pepperoni doesn't taste as good, it's kind of, I don't know, your, your taste buds are like, we've had enough of this. And your utility of each additional slice starts to fall. And it's really important that you understand this is the law of diminishing marginal utility, not total utility. Throughout the entire situation I described with pizza, your total utility could keep going up, but just by smaller and smaller amounts as your marginal utility uh, falls. So it's a really important concept, so make sure uh, that you wrap your brain uh, around it. One thing we can do to show the law of diminishing marginal utility in action is by modeling total utility and marginal utility, which is what I've done here. So you can see on the x-axis, we've got quantity. On the y-axis, we have total utility and marginal utility. You'll notice total utility starts pretty steep, right? Because those first few units, think of think pizza you're consuming, boy, your, your total utility goes up a lot, right? Because those first few slices are really good. But then as time goes on and you eat more slices, boy, it starts to get flatter, right? Because what you notice is that the margin utility just isn't the same, right? Each additional slice isn't getting you as much total utility as or margin utility as before. And now is your total utility still going up? Yes, but you'll notice not by as much. And so it maximizes here. Notice that the way I've tried to draw it is that total utility is maximized when margin utility is zero, okay? And then margin utility starts to be negative. That's what pulls total utility down. What a lot of students get uh, stuck on is if I ask them, hey, if, to if margin utility is decreasing, does that mean total utility is decreasing? No, like if you look over here, like where my, where my cursor is, and hopefully you can see that on the screen, the, you know, even though margin utility is falling over here, total utility is still rising, right? And that's really important um, to, to understand that concept. And also notice that margin utility can be negative. That's what pulls total utility down. But total utility will always be uh, positive. So, and this just kind of summarizes those conclusions. When margin utility is zero, total utility is maximized. When margin utility is positive and decreasing, total utility is increasing at a slower rate. And then when margin utility is negative, total utility is decreasing. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and do one multiple choice practice question. It's been a while since we've done one. Uh, according to the law of diminishing marginal utility, which of the following is true? So go ahead and take a second to pause the video, and then we'll go over the answer. So the correct answer here is going to be D, the satisfaction of consuming additional units, that's marginal utility, will decrease as consumption of the good increases. Now this doesn't have to happen at first, right? Like if we go back to the graph, notice in the beginning, marginal utility actually goes up for a little bit and then it comes down. So just something to be uh, aware of. So with that in mind, let's turn to utility maximization in full and looking at this very important concept called marginal utility per dollar spent. So, you know, as you get older, and you you have you know you have your own money to spend if you don't already. One of the things you're going to think about is, man, how do I get the best bang for my buck? Right, I've got a limited amount of money. How do I make sure I'm getting the most out of my money? And one concept to think about with this is marginal utility per dollar spent. It's how much marginal utility or benefit a consumer gains when the consumer spends one more dollar on the good or service. In other words. If I spend one more dollar on that good, how much more utility do I gain? Can I add to my total utility as a result? And the way you calculate it is you take the marginal utility divided by the price of the product, right? So marginal utility per dollar spent is equal to marginal utility divided by whatever the price of the good or service is. And so that leads us to arguably the most important thing we're going to talk about in this section, which is utility maximization rule. Okay. 
And I'm just going to warn you right off the top. This is a topic, this is a section of this topic, I should say, that gives students historically fits and problems. Um, and so I really would encourage you rewatch this section multiple times because you may not get it the first time. Ask me questions, ask other students questions um, and to make sure you get it. So here we go. It's the idea that a consumer will maximize their total utility. In other words, make it as big as possible from consuming two goods if the margin utility per dollar spent on each good is equal. So up to this point, we've been looking at one good or service, but we know the consumers buy many goods and services. And so what we're looking at here is well, what if they are buying two, to simplify things, two? How do we ensure they buy the right combination of those two goods so they can maximize their total utility? And the answer has to do with margin utility per dollar spent. So here's the formula. The margin utility of good X, so we're assuming the two goods are good X and good Y. The margin utility of good X divided by the price of good X should equal the margin utility of good Y divided by the price of good Y. That is the utility maximization formula. If both sides of the equation are truly equal, then yes, we've maximized our total utility. But oftentimes, you'll be presented with a question in which the equation is not holding true. So if both sides of the equation are not the same, the consumer should purchase more of the good with the greater MU per dollar and less of the, I should say, of the good with the lower MU per dollar. Sorry, this, this word right here should be good. And less of the good, I should say good, with the lower MU per dollar. Okay, so the idea here is you wanna go for the good that gives you the, the bigger bang for your buck. And as you do that, what's gonna happen for you math people is that the equation is gonna come back into balance. It's gonna pull those two uh, fractions back into balance and make the utility maximization rule hold true. And I think the best way to practice with this is with this chart. So we're gonna assume the price of a water bottle is $5 and the price of a movie ticket is $10. How should the consumer change their spending, if at all? So pause the video, give it a try, and then let's talk about it. Okay, so the first thing you need to do here is to calculate the marginal utility per dollar spent for all eight of these marginal utilities. Because remember, the utility maximization rule uh, requires us to have the MU per dollars for both goods. In this case, for water bottles and for, or yeah, water bottles and tickets. Sorry, I forgot the, what goods I, I chose here. So here are the answers. So first of all, your MU per dollars are one, two, three, and four for water, and then one, half, five, and four for tickets. And then what we wanna do is compare our MU per dollars, the numbers in parentheses. In the first uh, problem and the last one, they're the same. And so because they're the same, the utility maximization rule is, is held true. So we don't need to change our spending habits in uh, the first problem or the fourth problem. In the second one, notice the MU per dollar spent on water is greater than that for tickets. So we should buy more water and less tickets. Why? Because water is currently, or water bottles, is currently giving me more MU per dollar two than tickets 0.5. And then finally, in the third example, it's the opposite. In this case, tickets are giving me more MU per dollar than water, so I should buy more tickets and less water. So this is one of two types of problems you'll get with utility maximization. In my opinion, this is the easier of the two. I'm not saying either one is easy, but with this one, you're simply making sure you've got the MU per dollars and then you compare them, okay? Now, Let's get to the granddaddy of uh, utility maximization, which is working with these uh, tables. So uh, here's the setup. Let's say the consumer is buying two goods, uh, movie tickets and go-kart rides. Movie tickets are $10 a piece. Go-kart rides are five. We want to know what combination of movie tickets and go-kart rides will maximize this consumer's utility if their budget is $40. And so 
what I want to do here is really take this step by step, one step at a time. And even though this is practice, I do encourage you to draw this, write this out, um, because it will help you see how to do this. So how do we go about this? Well, first of all, let's look at the table. So in this case, we've got our quantities one to four. Uh, I've given you the total utility for movies. I've given you the margin utility for rides. And then we have several blanks we need to fill in. So what I want you to do, we're going to do the step by step, is pause the video and I want you to find the margin utilities for movies and then the total utilities for rides. So go ahead and pause the video, do that, and then come back. Okay, so if you did that, here are the correct answers. So for marginal utility, what you wanna do is get the change in total utility. So if I go from zero to one, I go from no utility, because I you don't get any utility from doing something zero times, and then I add 30, so my marginal utility is 30. This is basically, what do I add? What am I adding from 30 to get to 50? 20. 50 to 60, I add 10. 60 to 65, I add five. Over here, uh, for total utility of rides, I'll be honest with you, you don't really need this column to do the rest of this problem, but I just want you to practice with getting total utility from marginal utility. So again, remember, we just add up our marginals to get our totals. So there's nothing here, so it's just 10 to 10. 10 plus 5 is 15, 15 plus 2 is 17, 17 plus 1 is 18. So now we're ready to get our MU per dollars in order to uh, really try to solve this problem. So basically, I want you to pause the video and then go get the margin utility per dollar for movies and rides. Essentially, complete the table. Okay. And if you did that, here are the answers. So what we're doing is we're taking our margin utilities divided by the price of the ticket, which is 10. So basically take each of these numbers divided by 10. And then over here, because the price of a ride is five, divide each of these by five. And in this case, I left them as decimals. Uh, you could left, left them as fractions. It doesn't really matter in this case. So that is your margin utility per dollar spent. Now what I want you to do is I want you to identify where the MU per dollar for each good is the same, because that's what we're looking for with the utility maximization rule, is where is the MU per dollar is the same. And if you can, what I want you to do is color code them or basically pair them up in a way, right? Like if you see a pair, circle them. And then if you see another pair, put a triangle around them or do what I'm going to do, red and blue whatever works so you can visually see the pairs of numbers. So go ahead and pause the video and do that, and then we'll come back. So if you did that, uh, what you ended up with is this. So I tried to color code them the best I can. So we have two, situ we have two sets of equal MU per dollars. So we have two and two for rides and movies, and then we got one and one for rides and movies. And so basically what we're saying here is that both of these combinations of movies and rides fit the margin utility uh, per dollar spend utility maximization rule. Because remember, that's saying we need the MU per dollars to be equal. But that doesn't really help our consumer, right? Because we need the combination that's going to maximize their utility. But notice the other constraint. The budget needs to meet $40. We don't want to spend over our budget, but we also don't want to shortchange our budget either. We want to get the most out of our budget. So to finish this problem, we need to calculate the cost of each of these combinations. So go ahead and figure out the cost of the blue combination on my screen, the cost of, in this case, two movies, right? Because that goes with this two box and then one ride because that goes with this blue box. So in this blue combination, this is two rides, or sorry, two movies and one ride. So go ahead and pause the video and then do that. All right, and if you did that, here is the math. The cost of the blue combination would be two movies times $10 a piece plus one ride times $5 a piece, and so it's $25. Now, 
can this work as the correct answer, as the correct combination? Yes, it could work because $25 is not over our budget. But we want to see if the red combination will get us any closer to our budget because the closest we can get to 40 without going over, that's going to be the true best answer. So go ahead, pause the video, and do it again, this time for the red combination of three movies and two rides. Okay, and so if you did that, here is the math. Uh, three movies at 10 bucks a piece is $30, plus two rides times $5 a piece, that is $40. And would you know it, it adds up exactly to $40. So... The combination of movies and rides that maxis, maximizes our utility and gets us to that $40 budget is three movies and two rides. I encourage you as we wrap up this video, practice with this, rewatch the video, ask questions of me, your fellow students, whoever, uh, because you know it's one of those concepts that you just gotta practice with it, much like comparative advantage in order to really master it. So that's all for this video on marginal analysis and consumer choice. Until next time, have a great day.